All right, we are ready whenever you are. Um, our research project is on Jack syndrome and cellular communication disorder. Um, cellular communication plays an essential role in the everyday life of plants and animals. Through cellular communication, cells send signals to one another telling them to either start, alter, or stop a biological process. In our syndrome, <laughs> MECP2 facilitates the communication between nerve and muscle cells. It is located in the RTK enzyme protein. And researchers do not know much about it, but we are still learning about it today. The deficiency of cell communication leads to a variety of symptoms, including muscular and intellectual disabilities, breathing, and heart um, difficulties. Um, there are two forms of cell communication, local and long distance. The first kind is paracrine signaling, which is a type of local regulator. It sends cell, uh, signals to neighboring cells. An example is the growth factor, which um, facilitates a division and growth in cells. The next is synaptic signaling. It's when a signal travels down a neuron, causing neurotransmitters to be released, then therefore causing a cellular response. The third kind is juxtapen signaling, which go, it happens in multicellular organisms, and it's with uh, adjacent cells. And the, fourth, the fifth kind is autocon signaling, which is cell communication with the cell itself. And lastly, we have endocrine signaling, a form of long distance signaling, in which cells release molecules called hormones that go and they bind to the receptor molecules, which are then transduced and form a response. There are three stages of cell communication, um, reception, transduction, and response. In transduction, the, the signal comes down and the signal can either be transduced or amplified. Once the signal is either transduced or amplified, then we can turn it into a cell response. There are three different kinds of cell receptors. The first is the GPCR, the second is the RTK, and the third is the ion-gated channel pathway. In RTK, the ligand binds to one of the RTK proteins and then kinase catalyzes the transfer of phosphate onto another RTK protein. This makes a dimer. Once it is activated, then we can start the signaling to make a cellular response. Um, on the left here, you can see a normal RTK pathway in an unaffected person. GTCB1 is an inhibitor that prevents the signal from passing through this pathway to the, through the synapse and to the nerve cell. MECP2 acts as a suppressor to suppress this inhibitor so that the signal can pass through. However, in a patient with Rett syndrome, in their RTK pathway, since the MECP2 gene is mutated, the suppressor can work and it suppresses the signal so that it can't make it to the nerve cell. Um, a protein kinase cascade is a series of several protein kinases that phosphorylate one another and activate each other. And by phosphorylate, we mean add a phosphate group to the next one. So kinase 1 phosphorylates and activates kinase 2. Kinase 2 activates kinase 3, therefore amplifying the phosphate group. Many signaling pathways involve small water-soluble uh, water molecules, which can easily diffuse through the cell membrane, and that's a secondary uh, messenger. One example of one of these secondary messengers is cyclic AMP or cyclic adrenal monophosphate. This carries signals throughout the cytoplasm in the metabolic machinery, therefore we can break down glycogen and it this. When receiving a signal, the cell can respond in, a, in multiple ways, including um, blood sugar regulation and contractions. In our case, it is X-linked and dominant. X-linked is means it is on the X chromosome, one of the sex chromosomes, and dominant means if one copy of the altered gene in each cell is sufficient to cause the condition. Um, male mutations of the MECP2 gene often die before birth or shortly after because they have a different chromosomal combination than females. However, some males do live even into early adulthood. Males with this MECP2 gene mutation show symptoms similar to those with Rett syndrome, including seizures, intellectual and muscular disabilities. And um, in males, this condition is called MECP2-related neonatal encephalopathy. According to the National Institute of Health, the MECP2 gene is responsible for controlling the communication between neurons. And so in Rett syndrome, without the um, MECP2 gene, the connection between the neurons and the synapses is not there. Um, Rett syndrome is primarily seen in, in females because the males die shortly after birth or um, right after conception. And the average lifespan of a girl with 
Uh, Rett syndrome is 47 years. What are these symptoms of seizures? Which occurs after the age of two in the complex frequent after age of 10? Scoliosis. And an abnormal lateral curvature of the spine that have between the ages of 8 and 10. Autistic like behaviors. Like body rocking, toe walking, and sporadic hand movements. Breathing difficulties, including hyperventilation and exhalation of saliva and air. Microcephaly. Um, microcephaly means an abnormally small head. The child is typically born with a normal size head, but as they begin to grow, their head stops growing, so it creates microcephaly. Agitation and irritability, including long periods of crying and turning to no apparent reason. Retardant growth. Loss of social interaction and communication abilities. Um, here we have a graphic representation of the progression of Rett syndrome that we made based off the information we found on mayoclinic.org. The first stage is the early onset, and this stage is easily overlooked. This is where they begin to lose uh, eye contact and uh, interest in the surrounding areas. The next stage is rapid destruction. It starts between the ages of one and four. They'll lose previous skills. This is where seizures begin. Um, Abnormal growth and hand movement, hyperventilation, irritability, agitation, all that occurs right here. The symptoms may plateau at ages 2 to 10. This is where your limited communication and muscle movement happen. Seizures may also begin. The last stage, it starts after 10 years, and it's known as a late motor deterioration. In this stage, all of the previous symptoms start to uh, accelerate and they get worse, and they're uh, mobility is reduced, their muscles continue to weaken, and they still have seizures. As far as treatment goes for Rett syndrome, there is no one treatment for the disease as a whole. So instead, doctors treat for specific sim symptoms. So the patient will see geneticists first to diagnose them, who will then refer them to a neurologist, and they may see cardiologists or gastrointestinal doctors to treat specific symptoms that they may experience. This is Brooklyn, she's six years old and she was diagnosed with Rett at the age of two. She is in first grade and she enjoys sports track riding for strengthening her core muscles. Brooklyn is unable to talk verbally, so she communicates through a board, like a, you type on it and she communicates through that. And she uses a little bit of sign language, but she's not able to use her muscles, like as good as she should be able to, so sign language is difficult for her. Um, she has many different types of equipment that she uses. One is a hot low chair, so, her parents will sit her in it and strap her in it, so if her friends are standing up talking, they'll raise the chair so she's at eye level with them, but if they're like sitting on the floor or playing with toys, they can lower it so that she can be on their level. She also uses bath chairs and swings to make it easier to move around in the bigger and an adaptive bicycle for exercise. Brooklyn spends most of her time riding horses, and she started this at a young age, and she uses it to strengthen her core muscles. Um, Brooklyn's mother has, they interview her mother and talk to her and she said, Brooklyn is just like any other child. She's smart, she enjoys the same things girls her age do, but she just can't walk and talk. But she told um, interviewers that if you just take the time to talk to Brooke, she's just like anyone else, that you'll take the time to listen to her, watch her eyes, and um, just her, to speak Her mom says she speaks with her eyes, it's really cool. She can hear you. She can't talk back, but she understands what she's saying. And she like, they, they said that she communicates with her eyes and you can see what she's trying to say through her eyes. Um, that concludes our presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, very good. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> your graphic that shows the normal gene based on the Rett syndrome gene. Keep on going back, the, the pathway, I'm sorry. Yes, this one. Could you just take a second and kind of walk us through that one more time and kind of explain to us what the different aspects of that are? Okay, so PTP1B, right here is a suppressor, a natural suppressor that suppresses this signal from being able to pass through. So 
but so any this signal right here on the yeah, please. okay coming through so the y band can bind in the signal sequence and then tp2 is a g is a gene that suppresses this inhibitor so the signal can pass through in rat syndrome where mtp2 is mutated the suppressor is able to act and the signal passes through so someone without they rat syndrome Basically, they're missing the gene that stops Inhibitor. what allows it to go through. Okay, so how does that relate to cellular communication? If the signal can't come through the pathway, it can't go through the synapse into the nerve cell. Very good. Okay, um, one thing that I noticed whenever I was doing my research is that they mention autism and autism spectrum disorders quite often. Why is this one different from something like a spectrum type based disorder? We don't know much about it to be able to put it on the spectrum. We don't we don't know how to treat it as, as we're doing. The doctors do know that they have a lot of the same symptoms and um, it develops around the same age. So that's why it's so closely related to autism. But this one is effective as a gene as like different than autism. Okay. And, and autism well, with this, it's one gene is affected causing the um, cell communication disorder. So it's a series of very specific symptoms that go through the same exact stages. Autism can be severe or very mild. Everyone has the same gene. Everyone if you has have the same gene. Symptoms. Okay, and I did see where someone um, compared it to Parkinson's disease, mm -hmm. which I think is coming up in just a few minutes. But Parkinson's was a neurodegenerative disease and these kids don't have a degenerative yeah, neuron. Degenerative. It just isn't there. It just isn't there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, one last question. Uh, when you talk about the treatment, something that I read about was it talked about neurotransmitter antagonizers. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see anything about that when you were doing your research? I don't believe we did. Okay. All right, and then one more thing real quickly. You said that males don't get diagnosed with Rett syndrome? Very rarely. Very rarely. Do they get diagnosed? Okay. Because most Both of them die before. Because of their the different chromosomal combinations. Okay. So, and it's because they have the XY, XY. where the girls yeah. have the mm -hmm. XX, so therefore the girls have a healthy chromosome. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's very good. Y'all can give them a round of applause. All right. And while they're putting everything up, if y'all have any questions y'all want to ask them, you can. And we're going to go ahead and let our next group come up, which is Moonley and Gordon. They are going to be presenting Parkinson's disease. Yes.